uh, Arvind Suresh from University of Georgia, who will be talking about constructing genus G curves of rank 4G plus 15. So thank you, Arvind. Um, thank you so much. Uh, thank you, first of all, to the organizers for organizing this. Uh, it's been great so far. And uh, also thank you for the, the opportunity to speak here. Uh, very excited. <clears throat> So yeah, so let me jump right in. Today's talk is about constructing uh, curves with lots of rational points and um, large model wave group um, in the Jacobian. And so perhaps the main theorem of today will be the following, which is that if you have an integer g that's at least eight and with um, genus two mod three, then there exists infinitely many curves over q of genus g, uh, having at least eight g plus 32 q points and having a model wheel rank at least 4G plus 15. And so let me just, without further ado, let me just define um, the things that, I, that, I, that I'll need for today. Um, so, so what is gonna show up? Uh, a, a curve over K, uh, here K is a field, a curve over field K is a smooth projective one dimensional uh, K variety. And here for me, a K variety is, is automatically like a K scheme that's geometrically integral, finite type, et cetera. Um, and given such a curve over K of genus G, you can associate this abelian variety called the Jacobian, uh, which I'm denoting J sub X over K. And uh, so this is an abelian variety of, the, of dimension equal to the genus of the curve. And moreover, if you have a field uh, L with the property that you know, X has an L rational point, then we have a nice interpretation for this abelian group J X of L. It's nothing but, uh, pick naught of your, of your curve base, base changed to L. And here pick naught is just degree zero divisors modulo principal divisors. So just some quick examples. If my X is a P1, then every degree zero divisor is, is principal. It's the divisor of a rational function. And so the Jacobian is just a point, it's spec Q. Um, if X is, a, is an elliptic curve, then as you might expect, it's isomorphic um, to its own Jacobian. And so today, I'll need two fundamental theorems, or I guess these two fundamental theorems will underlie the whole talk. And so uh, these are finiteness theorems. The first one is due to faultings. It says that if genus is at least two, then uh, the set of Q points is finite. And this holds in greater generality, of course. I'm just saying the version for Q. The model wheel theorem says similarly that uh, the group of Q points on your Jacobian is finitely generated. And so you can express this abelian group as, as the product of a free part, which is Z to the R. And, and a finite abelian group this is the torsion part. Okay, and the rank of X over Q or the model veil rank of X is just the rank of the free part. So it's this integer R. Yeah. And so here's an extre extremely natural question. You know, as you vary your X over Q over all, you know, genus G curves over Q, you know, you see what happens to these integers, the set of, uh, you know, the size of the set of Q rational points and also the rank, uh, the model veil rank of X. And it's natural to ask, do these integers remain bounded as you vary your x, okay? And so here is a slightly uh, more convenient way to reformulate this uh, question. I mean, convenient for the purposes of this talk, which is we can ask if the following constants exist. And so I'm gonna define these constants here. R of G is the largest integer R, such that there are infinitely many genus G curves over Q satisfying the rank, ha having model veil rank at least R. Similarly, N of G is the largest integer N, such that there are infinitely many genus G curves over Q having at least N Q rational points. Okay, and just, uh, I just wanna clarify really quickly that if I have two, cur two curves, then I regard them as the same curve if they're isomorphic over Q bar, even if they're not isomorphic over Q. And so that's what this infinitely many here means. It means infinitely many that are pairwise isomorphic, non-isomorphic um, over Q bar, okay. And so for all positive, uh, genus, whether the whether this constant R of G exists or not, and open uh, exists or not is open, um, and uh, so the closest we come to knowing anything about it is in the genus one case, in the case of elliptic curves, where we actually have uh, multiple heuristics, uh, you know, which were released, you know, within the past uh, five years, and both these heuristics suggest that, in fact, the ranks of elliptic curves of a Q should be uniformly bounded by by twenty one. For genus at least two, there's no such heuristics on, on the boundedness of ranks. And uh, the situation's uh, pretty different for, for this constant N of G. And what do we have here? We have this very exciting theorem, in my opinion, of due to Capra uh, Caparasso, Harris, and Maser. Um, and they prove that if the weak Lang conjecture is true, 
then this constant does indeed exist for all genus at least two. And here, let me remind you that the weak Lang conjecture just says that if you have a variety of general type, then the set of rational points is, uh, is not Zariski dense in this variety. Okay. And so, so what are the current records for, for how large these constants are? I mean, we don't know they exist, but we can at least produce explicit examples of high rank curves or, you know, curves with any rational points to give, to get lower bounds. And so the current record for G at least four uh, is, is due to Shioda who proves that R of G is at least four G plus seven and N of G is at least eight G plus 16. Okay. And I'm not including the records for uh, G equals one, two, three, because I'm not going to try to break those records in the start. Okay. And so today I want to present some new records. Um, so namely, if you take an integer that's co prime to six, then uh, we can improve uh, Shioda's record to the following. And I'll just leave this here for just a, a second just to, to take it in. Uh, if you see the best case happens when we have genera that are congruent to two or five mod six, in which case we can get rank at least 4G plus 15 and at least 8G plus 32 Q points. This is 4G plus 11 if it's one or three mod six, 8G plus 24, it's one or three mod six. And then if it's four mod six, we get 4G plus eight uh, rank and 8G plus 17 rational points. Yeah. And so how are we going to, how are we going to prove these lower bounds? So the basic idea is, is, is we use this method called the specialization method, which is we, we construct a genus G curve over this rational function field, having at least N points. And then we show that uh, the model wheel group of this, of this uh, I mean, so the, the rank of, of this group, the, the Q of T points of the Jacobian uh, is, is at least R. And what happens is we get a picture like this. So this is our curve over, over Q, a Q of T. We can extend this into a family of, 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 of curves of the same genus. And here, this is some variety whose function field is just Q of T. And so this is something by rational uh, to affine N space. Yeah. So these points that we have, they extend to sections. And so these give rational points on these, on these fibers. And these fibers are called specializations. And in particular, we're interested in taking specializations over Q rational points of the base right? Because that'll give us a curve defined over Q. And so it just turns out without going into any more details, I'm just going to say that if we know that there are at least N points on the genetic fiber, then we know that uh, we can take enough specializations to guarantee N of G is at least N. Similarly, if the rank is at least R on the genetic fiber, then we can take enough specializations to get R of G at least R. And this relies on, on, the, on a theorem of Neron, which is, you know, sort of the glue that makes this uh, specialization method even, you know, work in the first place. And so it's not actually necessary to, to go via the specialization method. So I just thought I'd mention that there's this, you know, it's, I think this is fascinating because it's so completely different from, from, from the method that I'm going to be, uh, you know, using. Uh, so these authors proved in a, in a very recent paper, I, I think it was just released this summer, in fact, that R of G is at least 4G plus 2 conditional on a conjecture of Nagao. And what's, ex what's, you know, very, what's very different about it is they don't actually produce any, any rational points, explicit points on, on the curves, uh, on the curves which, which witness this, this lower bound for them. And so how are we going to produce the curves with many rational points that we need in order to apply, you know, to do this specialization method? So the idea is we're going to use the construction due to Mestra. Okay, how does this work? You start off by taking an even number of indeterminates. Here, this is, we take 2D many indeterminates and we want D to be at least, at least two, and we'll see why. You form this polynomial, which has as roots, these indeterminates, okay? And then we want to apply this, this, this fundamental lemma. Okay, what does this say? It says that given a monic degree 2D polynomial, you can cook up uh, in a unique way, you can cook up this monic degree D and a polynomial, and a polynomial of degree D minus one satisfying this relation, okay? And so why do we care? Uh, we care because we get a picture like this. We take this polynomial L, L of X and to that, and using this data, we cook up this curve X over Q of U. It's y given by the equation Y squared equals L, L of X. It's called a hyperelliptic curve, right? Um, we take this piece of data, the H of X, and we construct this curve Y equals H of X, yeah. And then what are the intersection points? Well, it just turns out, and you can easily convince yourself of this, that this identity actually implies that the intersection points are given by the coordinates u of i comma h of u comma u of i, okay, which is pretty nice. So interestingly enough, this method <coughs> sort of starts by taking the x coordinates that you want to specialize, that's the uis, 
and then somehow from the x coordinates you cook up both the curve and you cook up the sort of interpolating function that sort of cuts out these rational points on your curve okay and so there's 2d many rational points in total on this degree d minus 1 curve right um so using these rational points we can cook up rational points of the jacobian and here i'm going to take two times a point and i'm going to subtract this divisor at infinity this is the preimage of the point at infinity which is not actually visible um on these on this affine patch of this curve x yeah so this is degree 0 the divisor class is it, it gives you a q q of u point of the jacobian yeah and so if you just look at <coughs> if you regard this y minus h of x here y minus h of x if you regard it as a function on this curve x then just looking at the divisor of zeros in poles of that function gives you one relation in the jacobian between these points and so she she would actually prove that there's no further relations and so you you get and so the so these generators are group of rank 2d minus 1 giving this lower bound on the rank of the generic fiber and so what that uh, what that means for us is you compute what the genus is in terms of the degree and then you get these lower bounds by specialization you get n of g is at least 8g plus 12 and r of g is at least 4g plus 5 and so how do we improve this um so somewhat vaguely the idea is just we take some kind of monic degree e polynomial g of x with indeterminate coefficients <coughs> okay and we just replace x with g of x everywhere so that our original identity m of x equals h of x squared minus l of x now that becomes the identity m of g of x becomes h of g of x squared minus l of g of x okay and so this m of x was originally degree 2d now it's degree 2d e and so now we actually get this picture okay where we introduce these indeterminates t of i subject to the relation that if you group the first e of them then they are just the roots of this polynomial g of x minus ui yeah and similarly the next next e the group of e of them is the is is just the roots of g of x minus u2 and so what that means is under the map x goes to g of x the preimage of u1 is just all the t t1 So, so it's just this group of of e e points. The preimage of this is just this group of e points, yeah. And so, so here you see this curve looks more complicated, and that's that's my attempt to reflect the fact that you know the the degree has gone up. So you've got a more complicated curve, okay. And so the degree has gone up. I mean, the genus has gone up, but then we've also you know increased the number of points. And so, have we gained anything by doing this? Um, we actually have, which is I'm going to denote this curve x tilde. yeah and so this is degree e times d minus 1 now so the genus is g tilde the number of points is n tilde and the expected rank is r tilde whatever the whatever that means and I, i'm not going to try to clarify that uh, in the stock and it turns out and the punchline is what we gain by doing this is is the following it's that the number of points we get now is 8 8 g tilde plus now it's 4 times e plus 2 and here e is the degree of the of the map that we apply the the g of x okay so if g of x is equal if the degree is 1 that means we're not like we're not doing anything and then as expected we get 4 times uh 1 plus 2 we get 8g um plus 12 and then here we get 4g plus 5 and then that's just what you get from from you know the baseline method that i you know that i described above okay and so these coordinates i mean these indeterminate tijs satisfy all these uh these relations <coughs> and actually so they define um this variety g e of 2d okay and i'm going to i'm going to explain what that is now uh i mean be sorry before i explain what that is uh what do we need to actually make this observation or you know this trick effective to actually get lower bounds on n g n of g and r of g well what we need is we need to find a q rational variety so that we have lots of you know q points that we can take specialization uh over and also uh we want to prove like and this is actually pretty non trivial we need to prove that the points constructed this way on the jacobian that they're actually as linearly independent as as we hope for them to be okay and so what is this ge of 2d here's an absolutely mind mind blowing fact i think which is that it's given that it's actually cut out by this beautiful system of equations i just give you a moment to just uh digest this just the wonderfulness of this it's this these power sum polynomials in each of those group of e variables they need to match up for all of them which is quite lovely okay 
And uh, even here's an even more pleasant fact, which is that actually the question of finding a non-trivial Q point on GEN, and here by non-trivial, I mean that all the coordinates are distinct. This is actually a classical problem of number theory. It's called the pruhet terry escott problem. Yeah. And so just, just affirm the idea in, in, in everyone's mind, like what does a, a rational point of GEN represent? Uh, to such a rational point, we can associate um, a degree E monic polynomial G of X. We can associate N rational points such that when we look at the map X goes to G of X, the pre-image of the first, you know, the B1 is just the first group of E points. The pre-image of the second one is this group of E points and so on, right? So it's like, like we associated this a degree E N polynomial, which is composite and which factors completely. And so now we need to find a rational sub variety inside GEN. Yeah? And so, so first, I mean, it's natural to ask, what do we know about the rational points of these varieties? And I mean, unfortunately, most work is focused on the case when N is two. And even in this case, it's highly non-trivial and there's no non-trivial solutions known for E at least 13, which I think is like, ridiculous. Um, and it gets even worse if, if, you know, if we put the requirement that N is at least four, because actually the curve we get is E times D minus one, and we need this D to be at least two. So this is where the D at least two hypothesis comes in. And here non-trivial so, uh, Q points are only known for E equals two, three, four, and six, which is uh, sad because it's a l very limited range of uh, possibilities. But it's not all bad because uh, in, like, in each of these cases, uh, the rational points that, that are known to exist, th there's actually infinitely many of them and they all live on this uh, Q rational sub variety, which is, which, is which is what we need. And moreover, um, these, these, these varieties have a very, very nice uh, Galois action on them. This Galois group is like a wreath product of you know, some subgroup of a symmetric group with a symmetric group. And um, uh, I'm not, I'm not going to say much more about that, except that uh, this is, is, is proves crucial to actually proving that these points generate, uh, generate a high rank subgroup of the Jacobian. And so I just want to quickly go over the cases where we get these, you know, rational sub varieties and then what, what that gives us in terms of the improvement on those, on those, the rank and rational point records. Yeah. So first, because it's going to come up, I'm going to define the trace zero locus inside GEN. So this parameterizes those tuples for which you know, when you look at that map, G goes, X goes to G of X, then we can choose this G of X to be of zero trace. Okay, so here's an example. If you take the tuple one, negative one, two, negative two, this is, is, a, is a Q rational point of, uh, this should be of Q. So this is a Q rational point, oops, of G, G zero, two of two. And why? We can take this trace zero polynomial X squared. And when we do X goes to X squared, the pre-image of one is just one and negative one. The pre-image of four is just two and negative two. Okay. And so actually in the E equals two case, you see that this, the defining equations that I showed, those power sum equations, we just have the linear equation. So actually this is just an affine space. And then G zero, two of N, like the condition that it's trace zero is just one like linear condition. And so we get again, an affine space. And so this is exactly the case that Chiyoda used to prove what are currently the current published records, which is R of G is at least 4G plus seven and N of G is at least 8G plus 16, yeah? So in the E equals three case, the G naught of three of N is actually rational and is rational in a, in a non-trivial interesting way, which is uh, it contains this N plus one dimensional algebraic torus. And here this, this, uh, this is restriction of scalars and this L here is Q join uh, zeta three, which is the third cyclotomic field. Notice that E equals three and we're joining um, I mean, we're getting the stories that's related to the third cyclotomic field. Um, this is going to show up again in the case E equals six, so I won't say more for now. In the case E equals four, it turns out you can find a sub variety inside here, which parameterizes those points for which the associated polynomial is of this form, x to the fourth plus a of x squared. So just here's a simple example. If you take these points, yeah, and you look at this polynomial g of x equals x to the fourth plus one thirty x squared, it turns out that the map under the map x goes to g of x, the pre-image of negative one zero eight nine is these four points, and the pre-image of negative three nine six nine is these four points, which is cool. Uh, it's cool. And again, note the note the stark similarity to the previous case. Uh, this this variety is rational, and the reason it's rational is because it contains this algebraic uh, torus, which is k rational. And here, I mean, it looks exactly like the previous one, except except here we're joining uh, the fourth roots of unity instead of the third roots of unity. 
and I got extremely excited thinking this might generalize to higher um, E's, but so far I haven't had any luck. And I actually don't think that it's going to generalize nicely. Um, so anyway, the curves that you get, they're of this form. Okay. And then four will always divide the degree because of this inner polynomial here that we're composing. And so the upshot is we get odd genus, and then uh, we get, you know, the, the case for one and three. Okay. And then let me just quickly wrap up by saying in the, in the, in the E equals six case, uh, again, we find a rational sub variety, but actually this is just the sub variety from uh, the, the E equals three case. And it just turns out it's one of those amazing cases where it's these algebraic identities that you never expect. It turns out if you take something that's trace zero and, 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 and like a rational point of here, if you just take one of those tuples and append all the negatives of all the coordinates, uh, you, get, you get a rational, you get, you get a closed immersion actually of this, of this rational sub variety in here. And so here we have a divisible condition, condition that six divides a degree. And what that turns out, I mean, what that translates to in terms of the genus is that we get all the genera congruent to two mod six, and we get eight G plus 32 and four G plus 15. And um, so that's, that's pretty much all I had to say. And it's, it's just, you might wonder why do we have to say put G at least seven and G at least eight? The reason is that this thing covers this curve X. Like you might remember there was two diagram, uh, there was a diagram with one curve covering another. And it's just that when this is, when D is small, then this is genus zero and that introduces new relations. Uh, and, and that's why we have to put in that caveat. And so, and because my time is up, I won't, I won't actually say this, uh, say this out loud. Uh, but I let me just say, this is a reasonable question. This is just, you should, you should, I mean, you should ignore this. This is just wild speculation that I, I could not help myself. And so I put that there. Um, and I think that's all I had to say. And uh, thank you for listening. Um, I'll start with one quick question. Have you tried taking these families you construct uh, and specializing them further to construct like outliers, so examples where the number of rational points is even larger. Oh, you about. mean um, like numer numerical examples? Yeah, yeah. So can you find examples where uh, the number of rational points, yeah, numerical examples, where the number of rational points is even larger than your lower bounds? So I started this off in, in the genus uh, two case, so applying it uh, so apply, so in the in the e equals six case for g equals two, I, I, I started this off, but literally the fall the smallest you know size you know rational point that I could I could think of, uh, already the coefficients of the curve were like were like five digits and um, I don't have much luck and I'm and I'm also like not very good at it like it's okay. a scale, right? but yeah. Any other questions? Yes. Uh... So you so for proving independence of these points, you said you had a few, then you used the Galva action. Do you actually compute the big matrix with all the high, uh, height pairings? No, but actually, I was able to avoid the use of heights. Huh? And uh, so there's no heights. It sort of pretty much only re relies on Galva theory. The idea is sort of you take a relation that should not that you think should not exist, and you apply the Galva action to cook up a torsion point uh, that's not fixed by the Galva action. And then you argue that, well, these, this torsion point is defined over a, a transcendental extension over the, the field of definition of the curve, but, uh, but it needs to be algebraic over the field of definition. And uh, you sort of cook up a contradiction there. And uh, so, so that's how you, you show that you can't have like unexpected relations. Awesome. Oh man, these pictures are so cool, especially the one with the train tracks. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I can recommend the, the app. It's called Autodesk. It's, it's free. And uh, you can do this cool, like, swiveling stuff to the... Oh, wait. Uh, okay. I'm totally picking a brain about this at some point. Yeah. Sure. We have one question from Mackenzie. Oh, I don't have a question. I was answering Padma's question. Oh, got it. Great. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, thank you again for that wonderful talk. Uh, thank the speaker. Uh, and then in one minute, we'll begin. Uh